Fine Hamel said to me, I won't scold you, little friends. You must feel bad enough. See how it is. Every day we have said to ourselves, Bah, I have plenty of time. I learn it tomorrow. And now you see where we have come out. Ah, that's the great trouble with Elsie's. She puts off learning till tomorrow. Now the teacher, Mr. M. Hamel, is trying to tell them, the students, the people sitting on the back benches, that it is basically the bad habit of all of us that we keep on lingering on things for tomorrow. We keep on passing on that we'll do it, do it tomorrow, we'll do it tomorrow, and that tomorrow never comes. The teacher says, now see, we have been passing on things for the next day, and now the last day has come. Bah, I have plenty of time. I learn it tomorrow. And now you see where we have come out. We have come out, we have come to the end of it. And now we don't have any tomorrow to learn our language, French. Ah, that's a great trouble with Alsace. She puts off learning till tomorrow. Now those fellows out there will have the right to say to you. Now those fellows, the Germans, the ones who are victorious. Probably tomorrow when they come over here, they would sarcast us. They would find fault with us and they would say and now these fellows out there will have the right to say to you how is it you pretend to be Frenchmen and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language. Now L Mr. M. Hamel says that tomorrow when the German people will come to this place they will sarcast on you and what would they say? They would sarcast on you, they would comment on you that you pretend to be Frenchmen and you do not have command on, on your own language. You do not know your own native language. Native language is something which a person should know. Mother tongue, you know, native. How is it you pretend to be Frenchmen and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language, but you are not the worst. Poor little friends, we have all a great deal to reproach ourselves with. Now the teacher says that it is not the problem with friends. It is the problem with all the people sitting over there. The people of France in general. Because they will all be repenting. They will all be having disappointment, reproachment. Why? Because they never took their language seriously. It is a matter of disappointment for them. Your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn. Now he's, he's talking about... The parents, they are also to be blamed. They never took it very seriously. They were never very careful to make their children learn the native language, French. They preferred to put you to work on a farm or to the mills so as to have a little more money. And I, I have been to blame also. Have I not often sent you to water my flowers? Now see, the teacher says that your parents are to be blamed. But it is not that I am without blame. He says, I am also guilty because whenever I wanted to have some leisure time to give water to my flowers, I used to give you a free day. I used to give, give you a holiday. I used to give you some work to do sometimes instead of teaching you. And when I wanted to go fishing and whenever I wanted to go for fishing, I used to give you a holiday. So it is not the parents alone, but the teacher also who used to be blamed. And when I wanted to go fishing, did I not just give you a holiday? Then from one thing to another, Mr. M. Hamel went on to talk of the French language, saying that it was the most beautiful language in the world. Now Mr. Hamel was talking about the great language French, the different aspects of the language. He was talking about the clarity of the language, that it was the most clear language, the clearest the most logical, that we must guard it, guard it, we must save it among us and never forget it. Because when a people are enslaved, enslaved, when they are under some other's rule, when some other person is ruling them, some other country is ruling them and they become slave, they are enslaved, they become slaves of that particular country. As long as they hold fast to the language, hold fast to the language, if they have command on their language, they know their native language. It is as if they had the key to their prison. Mr. Hamel says that if you know your native language, you have command on your language, then nobody can keep you enslaved for a long period of time. 
If you have command on your language, it is very sure that you will be out of this prison at the earliest. Then he opened a grammar and read us our lesson. I was amazed to see how well I understood it. Now the child's friend says that it was amazing, it was surprising. He was himself shocked that he was able to understand the language so well that particular day. Because the reason was he was concentrating. He was paying attention. Before this day, he never took it seriously. He never paid attention to the classes. He never paid attention to what the teacher was teaching to him. This was the first day when he was listening carefully to what his teacher was teaching. Then he opened a grammar and read us our lesson. I was amazed to see how well I understood it. All he said seemed so easy, so easy. I think too that I had never listened so, caref so carefully. Now the child is confessing. He says that the fact was I never paid attention to my teacher. My teacher was teaching every day but I was not attentive. And that he had never explained everything with so much patience. Now he is talking about the teacher also. That the teacher was also not that patient every day. Today the teacher was teaching in a very in a very systematic manner, in a very gentle manner, with patience, with a lot of love and affection and in a way that the child was able to understand. It seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and to put it all into our heads at one stroke. Now it seemed that the teacher was knowing it that it was the last lesson and he wanted to give every knowledge of French to his students. In one stroke, in one way, in one lesson, one period, he wanted to give the whole knowledge of French to his students. After the grammar, we had a lesson in writing. That day, Anne Hamel had new copies for us, written in a beautiful round hand, France, Elsays, France, Elsays. They looked like little flags floating everywhere in the schoolroom hung from the rod at the top of our desk. Now these new copies of French language, they seem to be like little flags, flags of France. The, the sense of patriotism was there in the children, in the people inside the classroom. You ought to have seen how everyone set to work and how quiet it was. Everybody was listening, everybody was studying, everybody was making an effort to learn. The only sound was the scratching of the pens over the paper. Scratching of the pens, the movement of the pens while you write on the paper. That is called scratching. Once some beetles flew in. Beetles, a type of insect. But nobody paid any attention. They were concentrating on the subject. They were concentrating in their books. So nobody was taking any notice of the beetles. Not even the lit littlest ones who worked right on tracing Not even the littlest ones who worked right on tracing their fish books, fish hooks. The small children in the classroom, they were just tracing. As if that was French too. On the roof, the pigeons scooed very low. Now, there was a sound, there was sound of pigeons scooing. On the roof, and the pigeons scooed very low. And I thought to myself, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? Now, this is something very important. The child says that, of course, the people of France from the next day will be under the rule of the German army. But are they going to rule nature also? The animals, the birds, nature, is that going to be under the control of Germans? Are they going to force the animals also, the birds also? Are they going to be enslaved? Whenever I looked up from my writing, I saw M. Hamel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing, then at another, as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little schoolroom. See children, Mr. M. Hamel has taught for such a long time, 40 years. All the things in the classroom were a part of his memory. He was becoming nostalgic. He wanted to capture everything in his mind. He was looking at everything with so much of emotion. As if he wanted to fix everything in his mind, in his brain forever and ever. Just how everything looked in that little small room, school room. Fancy, for 40 years, 
he had been there in the same place with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him now for 40 years he had been teaching in the same classroom and everything was very very important for him he was he was thinking that from the next day when he will not be there in the class these things these benches the chair these these different aspects of the classroom will be a part of his memory forever and ever